Thank you, Paolo. Now, I do not look at myself as a curator. Um, I look at myself more as a creator. But I do think it's uh, interesting sitting here, and it makes me think of how the lines between creation and curation um, has been blurred. Because there are, you know, there are recent developments in how we make and write and produce pop music that I think uh, you know, is, is, is really relevant to this discussion. Uh, of, of course, first, uh, as you were mentioning, is the, the, the death of the album, you know, the typical format that we, uh, we deal in. Whereas now you pick single songs and, and you put together your own playlist. And basically the way the, the music industry and the artists were thinking about their works of art, which is an, is, is, is an album format, is no longer relevant. Uh, also, the rise of the DJ, where the DJ has become almost a bigger star than the artist, is, 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 a, is an obvious example of, of someone helping you, you know, to, to, to pick out your songs, put them in a, in a new context, in a, in a specific order, and all of a sudden they become the stars. Now the DJs, they've started making their own records. Uh, bypassing the artist altogether, and they're using uh, other people's bits, you know, not necessarily other people's uh, songs, but they're using uh, beats, they're using instrumental ideas from kids all over the world that sit there and just deliver, uh, basically deliver raw ideas to them. They make it, they take them, they pay them, hopefully, and they, uh, and, and they put them on their own record, under their own name, and they release it as their own record. It's a fascinating uh, development, I think. You also have uh, the issue of technology, who is obviously in, in the music field, there's always new uh, software coming out, there's always new instruments coming out. And it's, to put it short, it's basically making uh, the creation of music uh, more accessible. And um, you, have, you have software now that almost looks like computer games, where a lot of the music is preset and it's pre-delivered, and your job is basically to take those little pieces and, and, and make, them, make them work together. Um, is it good or bad? I think it's, I think it's really good. I think it's opened up. It's taken away the hurdles for a lot of, especially young people, to actually make their own music. Uh, anyone can go on uh, and on these softwares, use these softwares, and make it sound pretty good, pretty fast. So, it kind of what it boils down to then is the ideas you have and the creative choices you make and what your taste is like. And I think that's a very exciting development also. You obviously also then have the underground versus the mainstream scenario, which is something we deal with daily, where the normal way of doing it is taking something that's in the underground and that is, there's a current somewhere of a sound and a style, we'll take a piece of it or some of it and put it into the mainstream. Now, I know everybody doesn't like that, but, but it's uh, also an exciting way to keep pop music and, and uh, popular culture fresh. You also have the, the, of course, the mixing of genres and, and uh, changing context. We might write a song that we envision for a certain artist, uh, male, female, black, white, and depending on who does the song, actually performs it in the end and releases it, the song changes character completely. And one of the songs that you saw up here was a song we did a few years ago done by uh, Beyonce called uh, Irreplaceable. And um, what happened next, I mean, we, we almost envisioned it like a country song, but we put R&B drums on it and more urban and, and, and contemporary sounding drums. And Beyonce did it and, and it became a big hit. But then the a country artist called Sugarland probably must have heard the same thing and covered the song and made it into their song and, and took it around uh, the country touring, you know, big country music festivals and, and playing that song which I thought was an interesting way of, uh, uh, of seeing how context uh, will change the actual uh, feel of the song. Uh, I also wanted to touch, I mean, we talked a lot about the internet, and I, and I also want to kind of let you guys know a couple of places you can go to listen to these young and exciting beat makers that I was talking about that we've started now working on. And uh, you might be aware of SoundCloud, where you can basically go in and listen to demos from all over the world, and it's the, 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 the level is amazing, but one step over that is the, is the website called Beatport, which basically if you're a dance and EDM producer, you go on there, you put your song up there, no record company needed, nothing, and it's Beatport. Beatport. And it's actually, it's the fastest moving and the most exciting music site, I think, uh, right now where you know, they make a, you know, make a song on Friday, they put it up there on Saturday, and the following Friday, they could be number one on that chart, and 
all the DJs of the world are playing that song, which I think is a fascinating development and I think it's going to make music better and uh, we're going to keep music alive. Thank you. Thank you very much.